Hey guys, so we're back at the office. We're gonna kind of go over the stuff that we picked up at the hardware store. Um, let's start with the roller covers. These are the easiest ones to kind of start with. Everybody's gonna use them if you're gonna paint a wall or paint a room. Uh, the biggest thing you wanna look for in these are nap size. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna find out what kind of texture you have. If you have really thick texture, you wanna use a bigger nap. If you have popcorn ceilings that you're trying to paint, you wanna use a bigger nap. If you have orange peel or knockdown, a smaller nap, a one half inch nap or a one quarter inch nap, that would definitely suffice and you're not gonna have so much wasted paint sitting in the roller. And those run about $6 each. It really doesn't, I mean, some brands, it depends on the nap, how much it's gonna be, but you're really not gonna see a cost difference from nap to nap. And then we're gonna go over this five in one. So this five in one, obviously, five in one, it says it has five, five tools on it. Um, this is supposed to be your, roll, your roller cleaner. Uh, so you take it, this is full of paint, and you're gonna take it and you're just gonna scrape it down. Usually, honestly, like if these bigger naps, you can get about a quarter gallon if you do decide to scrape these and just don't throw them. Uh, outlet covers, so you're gonna wanna take off all your outlet covers before you paint the wall. And this is a really good tool for that. That way you don't have to carry a screwdriver and this. And what this will do, this will also do your, your putty for any nail holes or anything like that. Just put it on there, scrape it. Um, make sure you got a little bit extra putty, get that build up. So uh, when it does dry, it doesn't seep into that hole and you, have, you still have a divot. Um, a lot of them will have a metal piece on the bottom. This one doesn't. I wish it did. But what you want to do before you do the nail hole is you take it and you press it down like that and you just kind of turn it. You make a little more divot because what happens when a nail, you pull a nail out of a wall, it comes like that and it actually pulls out. So you want to make sure that all that's smooth and then if you indent it a little bit and put the putty in it, it's a nice smooth finish. So. Um, if you have like a level five, anything like that, as far as drywall, that's going to be your best route. Um, so get one. This one's about 10 bucks. I would definitely spend a little bit more money on, uh, Hyde's not a bad brand and they have a multiple of these, but I spend a little bit more money on like a pretty, uh, pretty one, or they actually make one with a knife on one end and then your five and one on the other. And that also has the, the hammer end on the, on the bottom too. That's, that one actually is pretty nice. Uh, so then we'll go into the putty. This is what we use, we use plastic wood X. So we use this stuff, um, it, it goes out pink, it dries white. This is really good because a lot of times I have my newer guys putty holes. So my guys, my experienced guys will come through, they'll make that notch and then they'll putty the big stuff. But if we're just got like little nail holes or little pin holes, that's what my guys are doing. And to, it's really nice for them to be able to see the pink and then it goes white so they know what they've puttied and what they haven't puttied. Um, this also is stainable and paintable. This, the thing I say about staining, I know we're talking about painting a wall, but we do do faux painting. And faux paint is a process where you're gonna put a layer of paint on a wall and then you put a stain mixture. Um, the biggest issue with the stainable stuff is if we're doing flow, faux walls, I apologize. Um, we use a glaze stain mixture after we paint the wall to kind of rag it on. And that way, any, any, kind, of thing, any kind of holes that we filled with this will actually give you that true stain color. Um, really good product, um, really like it. There's a lot of them on the market. A lot of them do the same thing. Just really look at dry time because the last thing you want to do, some of those putties are like 24 hour dry time. Um, really good putties, I think Crawford's one of the brands, but the dry time is, is a little bit longer. So the last thing you want to do is get, a, get into a putty and get, get motivated and get going and putty all the walls and be ready to paint and have to wait till tomorrow to paint the walls. Um, next thing we'll talk about is your roller assembly. So we call it an assembly. I've heard it called a rack. I've heard it called uh, um, a lot of different things. So basically we call it here a roller assembly and a cage. Yeah, I've heard it called a cage too. Um, but this is a roller assembly in our world and this goes like that, and the roller goes on that. Um, really simple. This one's pretty sturdy, it's mid-grade. Um, it runs about eight bucks. Uh, has a little hole there for the poles. Uh, Wooster has one that you click in, so if you do have a pole that's made by Wooster, make sure you got that or the adapter that you can screw this in before, make sure they're compatible with the pole you're gonna use. And you always wanna use a pole with these because when you press down on them, all the pressure goes on the end or if you're pressing like this, 
all the pressure will go on here. If you use a pull, it's easier to get a nice even coat. So even if it's a two foot, three foot pull, it's always better to use a pull than just do this by hand. You'll get, you'll end up with a much better pro product. Um, now let's talk paint brushes. We got Wooster and Pretty, uh, and to me they're interchangeable. As long as uh, I like the three inch uh, angled sash, uh, this is what I use to cut in. Uh, my other guys use a two inch, two and a half inch angled sash to cut in. Uh, we also have a flat one, a flat brush, not, there's no angle. So when I say angled sash, this is kind of what I mean, is if you look at this brush, it is, it has an angle to it. So as you're cutting in, you can kind of dig that in and cut in. These make it a little bit easier for the DIY guys or people that aren't really familiar with painting. Um, you can use, like I said, a flat brush. Um, I have seen that. This is actually a flat brush. So you can use this to cut in. It, it's not the end of the world. Um, but as a DIY person, I would definitely suggest the angled. You're gonna end up with probably a straighter line than jump into this. If you paint it forever, you can use this and be absolutely fine. I can cut in with this or I can cut in with that. Um, I just prefer that. Um, I prefer the three inch because I can hold more paint in the brush and cut in longer. Some of my guys like the two and a half inch. They've been using it for 10 years and they just, they're just not gonna change. Um, the three inch Wooster uh, at the hardware store was $23.99 and this two and a half inch pretty flat is $18.99. You can clean them and they'll last you a long, long time if you clean them and take care of them. Remember, water remember we'll look at your product. If you're using a water-based product, you can clean it with water. If you're using an oil-based product, you gotta use mineral spirits. Um, don't use anything really harsh like lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner will clean it, but what it does is there's glue in here and it'll actually eat through the glue and your bristles will start falling out. So make sure you use like a mineral spirits or something like that that's made to clean up oil-based oil products. Next we'll be talking about tape. So this is your blue tape, this is your masking tape. Masking tape's a little bit cheaper. It's about $3 cheaper a roll than the blue tape is. Um, we use this, if we're gonna paint a wall, we, at the top of the baseboard, we mask all that off. So, and then we plastic down. So what we do is we use the masking tape because it's gonna protect from any drips, anything like that. We use the blue tape for crisp lines. So anything, we have, like if we're trying to do a multi-tone wall or with stripes or something, we use the blue tape and we take it down. We caulk even the blue tape and the masking tape. So what this does is this doesn't allow any seep through, anything like that. So some people will say, if you caulk this, you're not gonna get any seep through. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe. Uh, I feel a lot more comfortable with this stuff and I still run a bead of cock over it and this seems like it works really well. Uh, this, this works really well, like if you get this really sticky stuff, um, this will work really well, like concrete, something like that. You can caulk it and actually make a pretty straight line on that too. So this is your two tapes. Also frog tape, frog tape's really good. Um, so I would definitely use that because what frog tape does is there's like one sticky for masking, one sticky for blue. Um, sometimes this doesn't stick as well as it should. So then we go to frog tape. Frog tape's really adhesive. It does not gonna pull a lot of stuff out. And it'll basically, it ran, ranges from delicates to your, to your mid stickiness to really sticky. So, I mean, whatever you need it for, if you have some issues with the wall that's not sticking or something like that. Or if you're trying to paint concrete, if you're trying to paint outside, um, masonry, stuff like that. Um, so this is your one, two, three primer. Uh, we grab this, we carry this everywhere we go because um, we don't know if there's like a water spot, anything like this. It's just a really quick, easy way to spot prime things. Uh, we do usually like, when we go in and paint like an interior room, we're gonna prime the whole room and then we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna put two top coats on. So with this, what we'd end up doing, like say there was water damage, we would prime it with this and then we'd prime it with our stuff, um, which is what we'll show you later, and then we'll put two top coats on. That way it kind of protects, um, it, it kind of protects any kind of seep through that would come through or anything like that. This is, uh, it's for all surfaces. Um, we use it on masonry, we've used it on our um, driveways, we've used it on anything that we're gonna potentially paint. Um, it's a great product and actually very reasonably priced, it's nine bucks. So I just, I always carry it whenever time we go to a paint job. 
This is a paint bucket. So this is a handy pail, a paint pail. Um, it's got a handle. <coughs> so if you're up in a ladder or something like that and you don't want to carry a gallon of paint, you can put just a little bit of paint in one of these, fill it to about here, and that way if you have any spills, everybody's seen the video of the little kid shooting the mom, the mom falling back on the couch and spilling paint everywhere. Um, this, I mean, you might be able to salvage the couch if you just got a little bit of paint instead of the whole bucket like she had. Um, the best part about these is potentially it comes in packs of five um, or six. So realistically, you could have six different paint colors and you just pull it out. So you're going to put these in like this. So yeah, like that. It's going to sit in there like that. I'm going to put my paint in there. Then I'm going to pull it out, put it to the side, put it to the side. I'm going to plastic the top so no air can really get in there. It won't dry the paint out that way. And that way, if I had to go into a different <coughs> color, sorry guys, um, different color, I can do that quick. And if I go back and do touch-ups, I can stick this in and go back and do my touch-ups. So definitely handy to have these. Um, just for not just for cleanup, but just for the fact if you're doing multiple colors, it's it's awesome to have these because you can do multiple colors with the same handy pail, and you don't need to do get multiple handy pails. Um, handy pails run about twelve bucks. These are about six dollars, and you get six of them, so about a buck a piece. Um, definitely something that you're gonna need if you're gonna do this stuff um, on your own. So this is just a normal paint tray. This is a liner. This is the actual tray. Um, this tray could last you forever if you don't like step on it, anything like that. Really cheap, nine bucks. Um, I fill out the, I fill this reservoir. It's about a quarter gallon of paint. Then you roll out here, and this goes in here. And obviously, it makes for a great cleanup. I've seen, I've seen DIY DIY hacks where you put tin foil on it and stuff like that. It's gonna seep through the tin foil. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna just buy just buy it. It's it's like two dollars. Just buy it. All right. Um, then you can just crumple it up, throw it away. If you are trying to save these and you have like multiple paint jobs that you're trying to do, you can actually get as much paint as you can out, pour, pour it in your pour it in your can, let it sit for a little bit and let this dry out. You can either peel it out or you could probably just paint over it. Um, I, would prefer, I would actually peel it out or some people do that with this. So when you see like an actual like paint contractor, you might see this and have this be a thousand different colors. As they usually just let it dry out. They peel out what they can and then they leave it. Um, I, we don't, I don't think that's a professional look, but um, you will see some of them do it. And that's pretty much all we have that we got from the hardware store today. Like I said, all this stuff, two brushes, your primer, your paint pals. And the nice thing about these is once you buy the paint pal, you don't have to buy another one. This one's gonna last, this, this assembly is gonna last Anything you're gonna paint in the house, this assembly, as long as you clean it, clean around this area, because that's what, when this gets all full of paint, it'll actually prevent it from rolling, and that's when you get really crappy, blotchy spots. Um, but if you take care of it, and you clean this stuff, you can clean your, clean this stuff. Um, they actually make a hose attachment that sits on your hose, it spins this, and then it'll actually clean all this off. Um, all this stuff, it's about 100, um, $136.97, I had to check, sorry. Um, but yeah, everything here you can basically clean or use again except for the tape. You know, the tape and the primer. But I mean, if you have to go buy more primer and this stuff, I mean, so you're looking at 13, nine, six, and eight, that's not bad. And you can go and paint multiple rooms with the other stuff that we have that you can kind of reuse. So, but that's about it for all the stuff we have.